I'm going to talk about uh, financial interviews specifically for knowing some basic finance in your MBA interview. And it's just more crucial if you're saying finance is your preferred field or your chosen field of specialization, then you need to know more. And again, I'm going to, uh, I want to outline this right at the beginning. This is not an exhaustive, exhaustive finance course. You can't do that in a, in a, in a video learning for, for 20 minutes. I want to outline several starting points and clearly outline some absolute fundamentals. What is the basic, absolute basics? After this, you'll have to do some rounds of reading, preparing all of that to get geared so that you can answer some reasonable question. This is not meant for a chartered accountant as a recap for finance. And I don't think I'm equipped to do that. They, they should know their stuff. This is just a refresher of some simple ideas. If you already know some finance or some exposure to some terms, if you're going to stick your neck out and say, hey, I'm interested in finance. Right? Lovely. Let's jump in. I'm going to sit, get a marker as well. Right. Financial statement, there's a profit and loss statement, there's a balance sheet statement, there's a cash flow statement. This is the starting point for understanding how a company is performing numbers wise. And so you can say they have a great product, they have a great marketing strategy, they have a wonderful footprint, their positioning is brilliant. All that is all uh, fancy terms. And so numbers is how much revenue are they making, how much profit are they making. Those are the important metrics. And so I want to start with the most reasonable and the thing that we all get, which is the PNL or profit and loss statement. And what are the what are the what what is contained in a profit and loss statement? Revenues. How much revenues a company makes? After this, there are several things. One is called gross profit. Then operating profit. Then net profit. What do these terms mean? Gross profit is the after you subtract the cost of manufacturing the good. And so suppose you're running a big factory and you sell a car for six lakhs. How much went into making the good? The cost of materials, people who are actively involved in the act of running the machinery, the machines, their depreciation, all of that comes here. Right? Not the depreciation, the actual cost of creating the good. Forget the term depreciation, it's too technical, we don't need it. And that, that, that gives you gross profit. After this, what sits here is yes. your administrative cost, your marketing cost, your sales cost. I've had the good, now I'm reaching it out to people. After you subtract that, you get operating profit. After this, you might pay some interest and taxes and finally you get to net profit. And so revenues, how much money is coming in through the act of whatever business you're in. Then gross profit, operating profit, net profit. This gives a snapshot of how much revenue you're making, that is how much money people are giving you for purchase in exchange of goods and services what are your costs and different comp components what is the amount of money you make and so profit and loss is usually for a period of time and you can say profit and loss for the statement for the last 12 months as a last month last three months and why is this complicated it is difficult and tricky to find exactly how much profit you're making because it is tough to apportion some costs so it becomes, suppose you buy a, a new fancy computer and that really is useful. You're going to put it in, in cost, but that computer will last three years. And so is that going to be the cost for a year or are you going to break it over three years? Or are you going to lay some part of it this year, a different part next year, different one the year after? All that becomes tricky. And so, so it's not easy to do this, but there's a starting point. How much revenues are coming in? How much is the cost? How much profit I make? And this next part, it's a balance sheet. This is trickier to understand. The profit and loss is for a period. The balance sheet is like a snapshot. It's a picture. So you say balance sheet as on date 17th of February. Balance sheet as on 31st of March. And so what does the balance sheet contain? It has two sides. One side is called assets. Other side is called liabilities. I'm not going to go into the technicality of it. I'm going to go to the crux of intuitively getting what assets is the stuff that you own. And everything that the company owns is part of assets. So you have a factory, you have a building, you have machinery, you have computers, you have laptops, you have printers. All of that will come here. And liabilities is who has a claim to those. What do I mean by that? Suppose there is, a, we have borrowed some money, then there is a debt. 
that is sitting there. And so that debt, the debt holder has a claim to this. So the company goes bust and then you have only some cash reserves remaining with you. The first thing you have to go is to prepay all your bank loans. And then the remaining part is equity. So on the liability side, two chunks you need to remember. One is debt. Other is equity. Equity is whoever owns this company. Right? So what is the stuff that you own? Who has a claim to that? So this comes to 100 crores. This is 70 crores. Then equity would be 30 crores. Remaining. A balance sheet is balanced. Your total assets have to match with your total liabilities. That's the definition. And so, so very often, what is remaining is the equity component. Whatever profits you make in one year, of which whatever you are keeping, that will get added to the equity. So every year, the more and more money a company makes, the higher and higher the equity will get. They might choose to pay back some debt. They might choose to keep it and expand their business. The balance sheet is a snapshot of what you own and who owns them, who has a claim to them. The debtors, the guys who have lent money to you, they don't own it, but they have a claim to it. Debt and equity. So what is this cash flow? Cash flow is very interesting. Very often, you have a transaction that you make for which the revenue is going to in one period, but the cash is obtained at another time. What do I mean by that? Suppose you have a, you have a, you sign an AMC for your, uh, for your air conditions in your house. So you sign it on, in, in May first week. For the next year, you sign the AMC. So you pay the money of say two thousand bucks and say, look, I have two ACs. Take care of them for a year. The guy receives the money. So the cash will come into the system in May, but he'll recognize the revenue over four quarters, an annual maintenance contract. He can't say all 2000 is a revenue for this quarter because he's committed to service and deliver for four quarters. The cash is collected early, but the revenue is going to be delivered and recognized over multiple quarters. So cash can come early or cash can come late. So how the cash flow is there and how is it different from your PNL is very crucial. For some companies, they'll have a very healthy PNL, but bad cash flow because their customers are not giving them the money. So they get into a crunch. So they'll always borrow for their day to day, but they're actually in a healthy position because they're profitable. Some have do a lot of their business with cash upfront. They collect the money first and then they do the service. So the cash cycle can be very different from the revenue cycle. Something to keep in mind. And so these three statements, what does it mean? What does it contain? PNL, balance sheet, cash flow should know. If you're going to stay, hey, I'm looking to major in finance, I'm interested in finance, I've learned about finance, I'm fascinated by finance, any and all of that stuff, you should know this. So read upon this, do a lot of reading to get an intuitive grasp and some details also. What is depreciation? What is amortization? What is earn earnings before interest and taxes? What is operating income? What is net income? All of that, you should know the term. Right? What are assets? What is current assets? What is liability? What is short-term liability? Long-term liability? What is a short-term loan? What is a secured loan? Unsecured loan? Some of these terms, the, the, the more financially inclined you are, or the more you should know this stuff. You are a BCom graduate or a chartered accountant. You should automatically know this stuff. Learn more. But if you're an engineer who's saying, look, I'm interested in finance, know the frameworks. Gosh.